What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I wanna to talk about the five biggest lessons that I learned over my 10 plus year career as a professional poker player. Hopefully some of these tips will help you guys out in your poker games as well. Let's jump right into it. All right guys, so over my decade plus career as a professional poker player, primarily online, but a little bit of live as well, I learned five lessons in particular that really took me from a struggling sort of break even player in the beginning to somebody who could consistently win in small and mid stakes games primarily. So so let's dive right into it. Counting down from five to one, number five is learning that it's all on me, AKA take responsibility for your results in this game, guys. You're probably gonna notice with many of the tips on this list is that they're actually, a lot of them are mental based because as I've said before, I believe that 90% of this game actually is mental. It's about confidence. It's about controlling your emotions at the poker tables because most people actually play relatively decent these days. And if you don't know the correct strategy, by the way, to consistently beat small and mid stakes games, you can just download a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. I give you my entire strategy. Really what I'm talking about here is just understanding that my day-to-day -day results in this game are on me. I'm not gonna blame anyone else. I'm not gonna claim that the poker site's rigged or the poker gods are against me or some fish always gets lucky. When you really just put it all back on yourself and say, okay, well, I didn't get the results that I wanted this day, this week, this month. Well, then perhaps I need to put in more effort away from the poker tables. So studying my hands in a program like Poker Tracker. Once again, I'll have that linked up in the description below. As I've talked about in these videos before and on my poker blog, this has been the number one thing over the years that has taken my game to the next level is simply learning from my mistakes, running filters constantly in the program in order to study my mistakes and also find out what I might be doing good as well. And also crucially to learn from the best poker players in my games. I've talked about that I often and study other players, the top players in my games, I review their hands in order to find out what they might be doing better than me. Guys, bottom line, when you choose to take full responsibility for your results in this game, you stop playing the blame game, which 90% of people do, trying to blame away their bad luck on everyone else. When you take full responsibility for your results in this game, I think you're gonna start having some better results at the poker table. Let's move on to lesson number four that really skyrocketed my poker game, and that was to never let them out work you. Guys, this is literally my bread and butter from very early on in my poker career is I would always say to myself, look, the other players at this poker table, they might be more talented at this game than me. They might know a heck of a lot more strategy, theory. They might be smarter than me. They might be better at math than I am and so on and so forth. But what they will never do is outwork me in this game. I took it as a badge of honor early on, especially in my poker career when they were saying that black rain guy, that's the guy who's always at my poker table. Every time I come here to play poker, he's always there. And he's on 20 other tables as well. In fact, as I've talked about on my poker blog before, people used to complain about me on several poker sites. They thought that I was actually a bot because they're like, how can this guy play so much poker? I actually had to prove that it was me a couple times to some poker sites because they couldn't believe a human would play this amount of poker. But guys, as I've talked about before, one of the biggest common denominators, the number one common denominator that you'll find with all the best poker players in the world, is they simply play more poker than everyone, guys. You learn the best through trial and error when you see the same situation a hundred times, a thousand times, and it gets pounded into your brain like that, then you're finally going to learn what works and what doesn't work in this game. And having played myself over 10 million hands of poker, that is literally the best teacher you can ever get in this game. And one of the biggest reasons I think a lot of people don't have success these days is they just don't play enough poker. Guys, if you played anything less than 10 thousand or less than a hundred thousand hands in your entire career. It's just not enough to even get a baseline understanding of what works and what doesn't in this game because you haven't gotten past basic variants yet. As I've discussed in a couple of these videos before, by the way, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss my new poker strategy videos here is I've gone through multiple hundred thousand hand break even stretches and downswings in my career before, meaning that I was getting unlucky, highly unlucky for a hundred thousand hands in a row. So if you've played under a hundred thousand hands of poker, your results at this point could literally be just random variants. You haven't even hit the long term yet. So guys, bottom line, don't ever let them outwork you in this game. It's the number one thing that you always have within your control. All right, so lesson number three that really skyrocketed my poker results, especially early on, is understanding that I owe it to myself to stop tilting. Guys, this is literally from having coached hundreds of students now in small and mid stakes games over the years. 
This is by far the number one thing that holds people back at the poker table. They get a bunch of bad beats, so-called coolers, setup, and the like, and they go on tilt. They get frustrated. They start throwing away their money, start playing a lot of bad hands. They start making a lot of bad bluffs, start making hopeless call downs, and so on and so forth. By the way, if you don't know what hands you actually should be playing, I have charts included in my free poker cheat sheet that'll help you with that. I'll link that up. I'll put it in the top link in the description below if you want to know exactly what hands you should be playing. But guys, these are all the common signs of somebody on tilt and often even more devastating. They jump up to higher stakes and they lose even more of their money while they're emotionally distraught versus a cool, calm and collected superior opponent who's sitting there waiting for them at higher stakes. So guys, I can't offer you a panacea for how to fix your tilt problems in this video. It's complicated. It's psychology. But one of the biggest things that really helped me out early in my poker career is just saying, look, I owe it to myself to stop reacting so emotionally like this and throwing away my money. Forget anyone else. Forget blaming the poker gods. Forget this lucky fish. It has nothing to do with them. This has to do with me and all of the work that I have put into this game, all of the long, hard hours at the tables, away from the table, studying my hands in Poker Tracker. Again, I'll have links for everything in the description below. I have put so much of my time and energy into this game, and I'm not going to allow myself to let some temporary emotions that I'm having right now dictate my results in this game. So I'm either going to take control, take responsibility right now, or I'm going to simply get up right now, turn off the computer, leave the casino, and come back tomorrow when when I've got my head straight, when my emotions are not clouding my judgment. All right, so that brings me into lesson number two that really skyrocketed my results, and that is to bring your A game every single time. Now guys, as I've discussed in these videos here before, for me personally, I treat this game like a professional athlete. That's always been my approach to this game because this is not a game for me. This is a job. This is something that I do to make a living. This pays the rent, this pays the bills. I can't afford to just be in there messing around like most weekend warriors, just having fun, just splashing around. No, poker is a business for me, and so I treat it just like a professional athlete does with their respective sport. And so that means everything that I do in my life is all geared towards being in top peak mental state when I do sit down to play poker. So specifically, this means optimized sleep schedule, optimized diet, regular exercise, meditation, and more. Guys, the bottom line is that if you can be at the poker tables when you are feeling feeling confident and well rested, low stress and so on, you're just going to have an immediate edge over so many of these other players at your table who are, you know, sleep deprived, who are stressed out because of something going on in their personal life, who eating all sorts of junk food and stuff that's got their insulin spiking and so on and so forth. Guys, poker is a game of mental warfare. And if you truly want to get ahead in this game, I'm not saying you need to be some Buddhist monk meditating on the top of a mountain for 30 years, but you need to start taking your emotional control and mental clarity much more seriously at the poker tables. Guys, the bottom line is if you're in there when you're feeling your best, you're going to have a lot more results at the poker table. You're just going to tilt less. I should mention, actually, that's the biggest thing. When you get proper sleep, when you're, you're not freaking out, having mood swings and everything, you're going to react to bad beats a lot better. All right, guys. So my final number one lesson that I learned over, over my 10 plus years as a professional poker player is to always remember your why. Now, what do I mean by this? I'm talking about always remembering, guys, why you got into this game in the first place. I can remember 2003 or so is when I saw poker on TV for the first time. They were just showing whole cards back then, and it was wild. It was entertaining. You got to see the final table with the million dollars on the final table, the World Poker Tour, all the famous names that we all know, the Daniel Negranos, the Gus Hansons, Phil Hellmuth and stuff, and that got me hooked like a lot of other players. I also watched the movie Rounders. I've probably watched it 98 times at this point. That dream of rolling up a stake and going to Vegas, you know. And finally, poker on the internet was exploding at this point, which allowed a regular person like me to sit down and actually have a shot making big things happen in this game. But guys, the biggest reason I got into poker, and probably for you as well, I'm going to guess, is that thrill and the excitement of the game that 
kids. You know, you feel like a kid when you sit down to play poker. We play this game for fun. It's meant to be enjoyable. And so when I'm going through my darkest times at the poker table, when I can't win a hand for days, weeks, months on end, this is what I always try to do is try to mentally bring myself back to that amateur who started out in 2003, who just played purely for the love of the game for many, many years before I decided to actually turn pro in 2007. And this has helped me really more than anything to keep my mind and my emotions stable, even when things are going really, really bad at the poker tables, as they inevitably will. Guys, I hope a few of these tips on this video help some of you guys who are struggling to find your way in poker right now. Like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And once again, if you want to know my complete strategy for smashing the small and mid stakes scams, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. All the best to the poker tables. Unless you're on my poker table, I will catch you next time.